What store in Moscow can you soon receive the COVID-19 vaccine at? And a long-awaited restaurant is open for business. Jay Bradley will be live on the scene when we come back to this sneak peek of opening day. Murrow News 8 starts now. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Kristen Garza. And I'm Mackenzie Dayton. Welcome to Murrow News 8. You can now add the COVID vaccine to your shopping list at the Moscow Safeway. The retailer announced today that they will have the capacity to administrate the COVID-19 vaccine to the public. The pharmacy there will administer the Moderna vaccine and schedule an appointment for the second dose. They'll also add a coupon for 10% off the rest of your shopping. Appointments can be made online at mhealthcheckin.com. WSU has announced the goal for in-person classes for fall of 2021, but with the increase of cases, students are hesitant on that idea. Reporter Tierra Trail has more on the story. It has been over a year since the world came to a halt due to COVID-19. Schools moved to online learning and attempt to lower the spread of the virus, but as time has passed, the world scrambles to get back to normalcy. Now our state will require schools to offer both in-person instruction for students and families who want it, and remote learning options for those who prefer to remain in that situation. WSU is trying to have staff and students return to campus in fall 2021, but has not exactly said how they plan to do so safely and maintain everybody's health. I think since cases are going up, it's probably not the best idea. And for me personally, I only have one semester left, so I feel like I've already transitioned from in-person to online and it would be hard for me to transition back to in-person, especially with cases going up. WSU has seen an increase of cases among the student body with 62 active student cases currently. The university has ensured that the Pullman community has little to worry about and that the protocols that they are upholding are working. But a WSU student has an opposing opinion. Just living here in Pullman, they haven't stopped it going inside of the water, the wastewater. Um, this, as far as like how many people are living in Pullman right now and nearby because it's only like a stretch from here. Um, they're not doing enough. Although cases are increasing with the hope that all adults will be vaccinated by May, it gives hope to WSU to bring their staff and students back to campus this fall. Tierra Trail with Murrow News 8. Nine new COVID-19 cases in Latok County and positivity rates drop at Pullman Regional. These new cases bring the total to 2,717 confirmed cases in Latah County. Pullman Regional Hospital's COVID positivity rates dropped to 6.2% compared to last week's 7% with only 21 positive results out of 337 tests. King 5 reports that there are currently 156 people in Washington State who are present with the three most worrisome variants of COVID-19. These variants commonly referred to as the UK variant, South African variant, and the South American variant. The 156 cases in Washington may not seem like a lot, but it could be the beginning of a bigger problem as more cases go undetected. Weeks ahead of the target, the White House believes its goal of 100 million vaccines will be reached today. Yesterday's total of 96 million is still far ahead, far ahead of the expected timeline, first outlined in December. The Biden administration has set a goal of 100 million vaccines in the first 100 days of his presidency. That goal will have been fulfilled only on his 58th day in office. This pandemic has been hard on everyone, but the hardest part would have to be the fact that we lost face-to-face -face interaction. This local business, however, has found a way to work around that and made their business flourish. I went out to Epic Fades to ask them how they're running a successful business during a pandemic. Opening a business is hard and is a huge risk during normal times, but now there is an added obstacle because of the current state of the world. Danielle Davis and her partner Maisie Reisdorf have proved that with a strong work ethic and a great personality, you can be successful even when the odds are stacked against you. Danielle and Maisie are co-owners of Epic Fades, a local barbershop near campus here in Pullman. Although they are located where Richard's Fade Shop used to be, Epic Fades has no affiliation with that business. 
Danielle opened Epic Fades in 2018 on Grand Avenue and stayed there for a year and a half until COVID-19 hit. During the pandemic, there was a change of ownership with the building where her shop was originally located, and Danielle was forced to walk away from that location after the rent was raised for her space. While she was without a location for her business, she started to cut hair in her own home. One afternoon during an appointment, a client gave her $3,000 to open her own shop. The following September, she opened up a new shop on Colorado Street. I cried a couple times, and the fact that it was just handed to me, I just can't imagine how much faith that person has in me and my business ethic and how I cut hair and how I present myself to the community and the public is, I guess, I'm doing the right thing. Epic Fades takes great pleasure in creating a very friendly and welcoming environment for their clients. They're usually open on weekdays and are very busy from the moment that they walk in to the moment that they walk out. I wouldn't be surprised if when things return to normal, they actually have a line outside of their establishment. Like my biggest compliment lately is people are, um, so normally they would go back home and go to their barber and then, you know, avoid a haircut and then go back to their barber again. Now we're getting people where they want to rush in here and get a haircut before they go on vacation and they're not using their home barbers any longer. To book an appointment, you can call them at 509-339-5013 or stop by their location at 904 Northeast Colorado Street in Pullman. For more information about upcoming events or for pictures of their work, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram at Epic Fades. I'm Christian Garza with Murrow News 8. Everybody wear your mask. <laughs>
The price nearly triples when students do not apply by the second deadline, only making the cost of this more outrageous than it really is. The FAQ page doesn't have any information either. Emailing to figure out why the cost is what it is and where the funding goes is just a wild goose chase of delayed responses throughout departments involved with commencement, each one passing the buck to someone else. The only possible places the money is going is to cover renovations to parts of campus made unaccessible during COVID. From Murrow News 8, I'm Zygmunt Soroka. You know, Mackenzie, I feel like it's a very important day here in Pullman. A lot of people have actually been anticipating the opening for Chipotle. How do you feel about Chipotle? Oh, I'm so excited. It's so much better than driving an hour and a half to Spokane to just get you know, a $10 meal and then drive all the way back. Like, it's more in gas, so I'm very excited. I only have to go right down the road. Exactly. I've never had Chipotle, but I'm very excited to kind of try it. All righty. So what loans have the Biden administration decided to fully erase? And what change has the CDC made regarding COVID-19 suggestions? Moreau News 8 will be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day, I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. According to AP News, the Biden administration announced Thursday that thousands of students defrauded by for-profit schools will have their federal loans fully erased. This change could lead to $1 billion in loans being canceled for 72,000 borrowers whom attended for-profit schools. The decision only applies to students who have had their claims approved and received only partial relief. WSU's changes to the traditional week-long spring break are causing frustrations and students are calling for change. Murrow News 8 reporter Von A. Fair has more on the story. They didn't seem to really take in consideration what students wanted and what faculty wanted. They kind of just went ahead and were like, well, we're going to give you three days off instead of a full week. Figure it out. Kelsey Lawrence is a WSU Global Campus student. Although her classes are normally virtual, she still feels the impact of the scattered break days. There's no real rhyme or reason. I already give myself days off from school work. It doesn't really affect me in any way because it's like, oh, well, I technically have a day off, but I have something due Monday. I could be working on that right now. When WSU announced their plans for an altered spring break back in October, many students express their frustrations and concerns about mental health with the university. Having a full week off allows me to decompress and just reset myself in order to finish the semester off strongly. In response to the growing concerns about replacing a week-long spring break with only three instructionless weekdays, ASWCU Senator Jillian Hutchison got to work. 
Um, I started actually writing it last semester. Hutchison created a resolution that was unanimously passed among ASWC senators to prohibit assignments from being due on the designated break days. Given the fact that we kind of got the traditional spring break taken away from us, I felt like it was really important that we ensured those break days are true break days. Once the resolution is passed, Hutchison will distribute it to the deans of the university, the provost, the chair of the faculty senate, and even the university president. It's more so to like encourage them to kind of think about it in the same way that the students are thinking about it. Say, hey, like, we're drowning out here. Please, <laughs> please give us a stick to like pull us back out of the water or something. WSU students share the same hope and message for the university. You're, you're having these town hall meetings and where your students are saying, we need a full spring break. We need X, Y, and Z. And you are just going, okay, we hear you. And then brushing it off. Listen to what your students are saying. In Pullman, I'm Vane Fair, Murrow News 8. The CDC has begun to relax COVID-19 restrictions, announcing today that students can safely sit three feet apart. This decision gives teachers more flexibility and time with their students. Other preventative measures such as plastic barriers on each student's desk have been removed. The CDC suggests that three feet between students' desks can be used at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. So as long as the virus is not spreading, so as long as the virus is not spreading, the CDC also recommends that six feet of space continue to be applied when in public areas. U.S. and Chinese officials are set to meet again today after yesterday's discussion resulted in both countries taking shots at each other. U.S. officials accused the Chinese of grandstanding for domestic consumption in China. Chinese officials fired back saying there is a strong smell of gunpowder and drama in the room which the Chinese blamed on the U.S. These comments add to a growing troubled relations between the two countries. On Thursday, lawmakers approved one bill offering legal status of around 2 million dreamers who were brought to the United States illegally and children of thousands of mig migrants admitted for humanitarian reasons from a dozen troubled countries. They then voted 247 to 174 for a second measure uh, creating similar protections for one million farm workers who have worked in the U.S. illegally. The government estimates they comprise half the nation's agricultural laborers. Alexi McCaymond is stepping down from her position at Teen Vogue after saying her past anti-Asian and homophobic tweets are overshadowed, have overshadowed her work. Tweets resurfaced from when McCaymon was a teenager and a college student in 2011 after she was appointed editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue. Chief People Officer Stan Duncan told U.S. staff that McCaymon's departure comes as the best path forward for her controversy doesn't overshadow Teen Vogue's work to become more inclusive. How will the beginning of spring reflect in our upcoming weather? More on Murrow News 8 when we come back. Days, months, hey, I'm Jim from across the street. years, I give you this. a lifetime, can rush by without realizing what we're missing. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? 
because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Uh, 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 um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. <laughs> The spring equinox will occur at 5.37 a.m. Eastern Time on March 20th, which is early tomorrow morning. After an unusually cold and long winter, spring will be a little more of those winter conditions before taking a traditional warm condition. With spring right around the corner, let's check in with Von A. Fair at the Weather Wall to get an update on the forecast. Thanks, Christian. Yes, so today is going to be the last day of winter, and I really want to start off my weathercast by stressing and highlighting the conditions across the country that are going to move us all into this new spring season. So to begin, the upper half of the country, including the Pacific Northwest, is going to have a slower transition into this spring season because of some lingering snow conditions. But on the other hand, on the West Coast, it is going to be very typical warm conditions, and that includes the southwestern states like Arizona and Texas. And then in the south, the southern states are going to be moving in to tornado and thunderstorm season, so watch out for that. And then residents on the east coast are going to have a little bit of a wetter transition into the spring season. Now back to Pullman for today, it is a little bit chillier and colder outside than what we've been experiencing the past few days. We do have a high of 49 and a low of 35, and then we have finally hit our 7 p.m. sunset time, which means our days are just getting longer and longer. And then tomorrow for the first day of spring, conditions are gonna be a little bit chillier than what we've experienced today, and there is gonna be an 18 mile per hour southwesterly wind, so it is gonna be really chilly out there, so make sure to bundle up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the conditions across the state for today. Very typical spring weather everywhere. On the west side of the state, Seattle and Olympia, we do have some rain. And then on the east side of the state in cities like Yakima and Tri-Cities, we do have some sun. But overall across the board, temperatures in the 50s, lows in the 30s and 40s. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the five-day forecast. I'm going to step off the screen and let you guys take a peek. The one thing that I do want to stress is that Monday there is a small chance of snow. It's not going to be anything crazy, less than an inch if anything, and then by the afternoon it'll taper off into some rain, so just keep an eye out for that. That's all I've got. Back to you at the desk. Alrighty, thank you, Vane. Uh, so why might WSU's baseball get their first test of the season? and how Amazon is joining in on the NFL cash cow. More when Murrow News 8 returns. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, you, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy, you, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co-pilot, your co-pilot's co-pilot. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <laughs> He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right. No employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving.
start the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. The teams haven't been to the tournament in 30 years and left Wednesday to fly to San Antonio, Texas to prepare for their first game. The Cougs have the ninth seed and the Bulls have the eighth. The WSU baseball team starts their weekend series against Oregon State today. The Cougs play at 5.30 at, at Josh Stadium in Corvallis, Oregon. The 10 and 2 Cougs face the Beavers Friday, Saturday at 1.35 p.m. and Sunday at 1.05 p.m. The series is part of a 12-day, nine-game road trip. Following this series is a two-game set in University of Las Vegas and a weekend series at Arizona State University. Amazon will partner with the NFL for Thursday night football streaming rights. The companies have made a deal where now Amazon will stream yeah, all Thursday all night football games on Amazon Prime Video. It's all the rights agreement is worth $113 billion over 11 seasons and begins in 2023. After 710 days, the NCAA basketball tournament is back. The first round started today after yesterday's yeah, first four tournaments. A series of playing games between teams to get into the 64 team bracket. The first round will be through Saturday and the second round begins Sunday through, through Monday. The tournament is being held in Indiana through various arenas such as Lucas Oil Stadium and Mackey Arena in West okay. Lafayette. More when Murrow News 8 returns. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Find her. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. <laughs> Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because a pair of cat dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> Construction on the US 95 South Highway between Moscow and Thorn Creek Road is set to start this fall. Work to improve this highway started over a century ago, and after many years of setbacks, the highway is finally undergoing construction. The project is expected to cost over $60 million, and officials expect 7,000 drivers to move along this stretch of road daily. The project is set to take two years to complete. Mackenzie, do you drive to Moscow regularly? Um, I used to, sometimes it's not as often anymore, but I do, yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. If you missed anything in this or any of our previous newscasts, you can always watch us on our YouTube channel. More news can be found at nwpb.org slash mn8, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Have a good night.